are here. <sighs> welcome, welcome. Returning today, it is my honor to have the privilege to give you this open by our generous hosts, the All Elite Alex and Big Sexy Joe himself. I am main event Matthew Klein, writer of the IDW original series Crashing. And if you couldn't tell so far, it's another wild week of wrestling previews and reviews. And we're here to peek into the future of what's to come with WWE's payback, which will have already happened by the time you're listening, and AEW's All Out tonight. Alex, Joe, thank you for letting me come on and do this with you. Holy thank shit. Thank you. That is yeah. freaking great. <laughs> I agree. Uh, no, seriously, thank you for coming. We are always more than happy to welcome you back. Mm-hmm. And uh, it is always a pleasure to to get to chat with you. So, um, as as folks may have gathered by the fact that from that intro, it is another wrestling show. Uh, I wanted to point out from last week where we we did the uh, I'm going to confuse these two all all day. I'm sure uh, where we did the the Wembley Stadium All In show. Um, had I not changed my pick from MJF to Adam Cole out of uh, from your well well given influences, I would have had more right answers than you two. So really, this is just a lesson, Alex, and why one should not give in to peer pressure. I, I agree completely. Yeah, I agree completely. So um, anyway, that said, uh, I'm actually surprised that Punk and Samoa Joe opened the show. Oh. Yeah, me too. Very much, yeah. but now you know why. I that was the plan originally. Anyway, anyway, um, we, you said last week you're not listening to the sheets. That's true. Joe, Joe, have you already gone back on <laughs> on your uh, your cleanse? I don't know where I got that information. It, it crawled in my ear. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's that's totally fine. Uh, I've deliberately, like, obviously you've heard about the commotion, but I've deliberately stayed away from any of the details because I, I yeah. it, it, it's I, only. Been I have been reasons. tracking it. I just haven't believed any of it. It's more just like I'm, I'm watching this as like another storyline. I have no like anything Dave Meltzer says. I don't believe. Oh, I yeah. Guess. Dave Meltzer. So, I, so. So and I just I've just been following it like another wrestling storyline more so than I think this is what actually did or didn't happen. That's fair. And I mean, honestly, based on what caused what the kickoff for it was, but you know, with uh, someone wanting to use real glass and someone else saying that's a stupid idea. Yeah, I, I'm kind of on the that's a stupid idea phase because I've cut myself on um, when I was doing dishes. I cut a little bit of glass. And I still have the scar from that on my finger, like five years later. Like glass is not something you want to fuck around with. Oh, no, so, no. It's terrifying. Yeah. Anyway, this is this is neither here nor there. We, so um, how did we do? Do you have the result? I do. I do. So this is why I was a little. Bit, I wanted to um, make a point or or open up with that. So the coin got four of eleven. Ha. Uh, Matthew got seven of eleven. Mm-hmm. And Joe and I got eight of eleven. Yes. <laughs> well, because you you both you both picked they would win that ROH tag title. Correct. Right? That is the only thing that um because everything else we had was basically the same. Um yeah, it was the same. Uh I had Jack Perry winning by interference, but he lost completely. Um Joe was right in that there was interference in the um the main event, but it yeah. wasn't. It wasn't Adam Cole that bent, or Adam Cole didn't win from it. I got to be honest. I'm very happy. This is one of those times that I was wrong mm-hmm. because Maybe. I think the story possibilities are much more vast now. I th- I think different. had there been a turn, like had one of them betrayed the other, it would have made yeah. more sense for Adam Cole to win. And because the three of us were on the, um, there's going to be a betrayal. Yeah. Right. Like it. I think at one point I might have said I really hope they stay together after this, but I can't see it. Kind, yeah. You know, like like the same thing we said. Like it made more story sense for FTR to beat the Young Bucks, but we oh didn't think God. they would based yeah. on the um, the the legal that was, talks. That was the one where I I I voted with my heart and not my head, and uh, and it it came back to bite me on that one. Yep. 
I, you know what I will say? I want to applaud the restraint in the way that the show was booked in the sense of it didn't rely on some big debut. It didn't yeah. rely mm-hmm. on uh, a swerve for the sake of a swerve, really. And I, so I really, I really applaud how that show was booked from a storytelling standpoint, not from an HR standpoint. Uh, right. Yeah. Let's, let's put it, let's separate those two out. But the one of the big complaints with AEW has been they rely too much on other people coming in and making a splash or that they rush booking, you know, four weeks worth of a storyline in one day or in, a, in mm-hmm. two shows. And I didn't think there was much of that, honestly, on the show. So I really I really think it was a very, very, very well booked show for the company. I agree. I, I think this show book and everything overall it was um really impressive how well it was handled yeah. other than that you know i didn't no, no, let me just get that straight i know we tangent all the time i like ftr better they're definitely my favorite team it's just it was the wrong call for me because of the hr issue like you said and we're not even gonna call it an hr issue we're gonna call it a, a dangerous legal issue and that's why I just was like, wow, Tony Khan just really can be a kid in the sandbox and his mind cannot be changed. But I agree. What I thought was ridiculous was you're going to have FTR get rewarded and still continuously rewarded on Dynamite. But Punk and, Punk and um, Jeff Perry have a skirmish backstage and they're both suspended. I mean, and- they literally had like a little bitch fit. And they got suspended. And that's so, why that's why this is such a that's why it comes off as unprofessional of a completely. company. And that is that is a that is the knock really at the end of the day is that this is not a very professional company. It is no. a very well funded co- company. Yes. And there's a difference there. Um, and that's that's and it's a real what is what is a horrible shame is that they had their most successful show ever. They basically figured out their own version of WrestleMania. And and the the big conversation is not about the success of that show. It's not about Mercedes Monet's debut. It's not about the storyline of MJF and Adam Cole, which is tremendous and maybe the best creative they've done in years. It is about how they're, you know, unprofessional backstage. And that is that is a real, real shame and a real sign of a company that's not quite there yet. Um, yeah. But in, and that is that sucks. Let's be very clear. Mm-hmm. That sucks because it's such yeah. a suck. It sucks. A disservice to everybody who worked so hard on that show. Yeah. Like, I'd be livid. If I was on that show. Absolutely. Because this is what everyone's fucking talking about. Again, is CM Punk. And the other thing is, yes, I read the stupid dirt sheets. I'm so weak. But (laughs) if it turns out that he actually lunged at Tony Khan and said, I hate this place, you know, get him the fuck out. Get him out. If he's that much of a child, get him out. If that didn't happen, I retract that statement. But from what I understand... When I watched it, I knew something was weirdly up during the pre-show because Jack Perry, like, looked right in the camera, like, deliberately and was like, look, real glass, cry me a river. Which like, is which is also something that should never happen from a professional standpoint. Right. That is That is a completely immature, but that is also the environment Tony has fostered now is that people can go on camera and shoot and bring up dirty laundry backstage in a way that's completely unprofessional. Um, but that is the culture he has created with what he has and hasn't allowed backstage. And that was a spark that should never have been lit, should never have been allowed in any way, shape, or form. And you don't see that bullshit in WWE, right? Because they don't allow for that. They don't tolerate it. So that right there was a problem. 
Um, and and again, that's there's so much fault to go around. I'm sure someday maybe we'll find out what did or didn't actually happen on a horribly biased dark side of the ring. Um, but uh, but that was that was just like a weird a weird stupid thing that never needed to happen. Um, and that completely is overshadowed the show. And again, why are we not talking about Mercedes Monet making her all e- all elite debut? Instead, we're talking about childish backstage BS. Yeah. Um, and again, I think Eric Bischoff had the, my favorite take of this this entire week. If, I mean, I if, <laughs> if Tony Khan was actually sitting there and watched all this, and if CM Punk lunged at him, and he goes on camera saying, I can't comment because of an investigation. Like, yeah. This is the shortest investigation there will ever be in the history of investigations. Plus, right. you've already let a guy with a weapons charge and arrest on the That's same sense. show. So, like, this is this is a weird, very unprofessional look for the company on the heels of the biggest event they could yeah. ever yeah. have done, which is yeah. what makes yeah. it so tragic, in my opinion. But we're harping on this. And we yeah. have so much to go over. Yeah, so, we got to go over, yeah. Alex, any final thoughts on, on All In for you? I honestly, all in all, uh, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I think I, I think the shitty thing is, is like you said, that we're not talking about um, MJF and Adam Cole post post the event. We're not talking about the um, the fallout from Eddie Kingston, um, Orange Cassidy doing a an orange punch punch to Claudio Castagnoli, which I think Matthew you called as Claudio taking. I called pin. Orange Cassidy getting the win. I and called I said, it back. I the, wouldn't that I, be a great thing to happen if you were really going to try and elevate the younger yep. guys and i i think show. one well one of us called claudio is taking the pin i don't know who it was but we have between the three of us we had called that ending we called um, that yep. yeah so i you know i i think like there, there are so many things like that that we i would rather we talk i would rather talk about how it's kind of disappointed by the um the finish of the women's match sure. um you know, i'd rather talk about that kind of stuff but ultimately it's just been or, or how the women's match was the shortest match on the entire card and only one out of 11 matches went to the women's division and they stuffed it yep. with four yeah. people. Exactly. Yeah, the state it's... of the women's division in AEW was put on full display in front of 81,000 people and they didn't even yeah. pretend they were better. Yeah, um, it was terrible. That was absolutely so, terrible. Spe- speaking, of, uh, speaking of stuffing a women's match into a PPV full of men, though, um, all out has only Chris Statlander versus Ruby Soho. Well, I think that's a great segue, Alex. Let's 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 that go into. Good. We went from all in. Let's just go right into all out. Right into all out. Let's do it. We're we're one week removed from all in, which is a really interesting uh, business model that they're going to be doing next year as well. Yeah. It, it, it. So this is their version of WrestleMania Night One and Two, essentially. Except it's in Ooh. multiple countries, and it's two different ppvs for people to pay for i know which I, I mean it's like it's it's also it's not as exciting a card as night not one of all. wrestlemania and night two is always supposed to be the biggest night of mm-hmm. wrestlemania so they're kind of doing it in reverse yeah um, they're doing it in reverse uh, unless they change it next year this could be just they, this is, you know, first time, you know, jitters or whatever. They don't have everything down. Maybe next year they'll make All Out huge. It's obviously going to be in Chicago again. Chicago so, seems to be a so problem. My question to you two is one of the big critiques I hear in, in you know, the IWC, which is not the real world, let's be very clear. But one of the big book. concerns I've had and that I see is just like because they were so back to back and even yeah. with five hours of original programming every week there seemed to be a lack of build for all out completely there was a lot of concern mm. there would be so many things just sort of thrown together last second or rematches how do you two feel this card shapes up so this card shaped up out of nowhere this is just like who do we have on the roster let's put them in matches because there's nothing with booking even tonight, if you, you know, read, you know, what the spoilers is for Collision for MGF and Adam Cole, like, there's nothing. They put no effort into this. And I feel like they're going to get crucified 
tomorrow night with no CM Punk. I really feel like that that sh- it's going to tank the show in Chicago. I, I just it, I do. Is it official? Has Tony come out publicly yeah. said it? He said they're suspended, and okay. Punk wasn't in Chicago for Dynamite, and Collision's in Chicago tonight, and that was well that was taped with Dynamite, so that is going to be you know what I mean. Um, unless they pull a last minute. You know, hey, they were suspended for a week. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I if I'm Tony Khan, I've done worse things. I let CM Punk fucking wrestle in Chicago to make me money. Sure, there's no consequences to anything. So just just let him wrestle and make your money and make your fans happy. Right. Like that's, that's honestly that's what I would do. Even if you've got him yes. somewhere in the card, but there doesn't seem to be a match where he could fit in easily. Um, I say let's make it real life, just throw in Jack Perry versus CM Punk. Yeah, just I just, would actually be dude. all for that. I think that would be fantastic. It's, and that builds I, on the real world heat from it. I think, um, be great. So I, I think that would go horribly wrong once it got in the ring because I don't yeah, think Jack Perry I don't think Jack Perry can be professional enough. And I yeah. think Punk is at his wits end and on his last nerve. And I think he'd be very prone to misinterpreting something and ending mm-hmm. up firing a live round. I think that would be a horrible yeah. thing to do. I think it would be a very Tony Khan thing to do. Yeah, it'd I be great it'd crash be a TV. Terrible thing to do. Yeah, it'd be great crash I, TV. That's just it. I, I, I'm, crash TV. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm on the same page as Matthew. I think it would be, I would love to see it eventually. I think it's too soon to see it's it. Too soon now. Too fresh. Yeah. Um, yeah. So where do you want to start as far as predictions on this Let's show? Let's start with Statlander and Ruby Soho. I so I'm going to one of those two ways I'm looking at this. Part of me is like Statlander is going to retain. I, I don't I don't see Statlander losing the title. However, yeah. and this might be giving them too much credit. I would love to see what happens when if Ruby Soho yeah. and Soraya both are both walking around with belts and Tony Storm doesn't. Correct. Because if they can keep that Tony Storm character going that she's got right now, it's money. And she doesn't even have to keep winning. Like she can exactly. lose and lose and stay on TV and lose and lose and lose and just continue down this downward spiral because it is gold. Like it yeah, is I like fantastic I like, right now. I, I'm a big Tony Storm fan anyway. They've wasted her. But I mm. like this this particular uh, you know, gimmick they got for her. Plus, I'm going to be honest with you, Statlander isn't Jade Cargill, so I don't have any, like, preconceived notion of going in being like, oh, Statlander's going to keep it. I think Statlander's talented. She's had it for, what, two months? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, give it to Ruby Soho. I, fuck- see, yeah. I'm hoping so it's much- going to be Ruby just because of what can come from it. And Same. I also think you don't want to have too many long title reigns in a row. Right. I agree. I'm going to go with Ruby on this for all the, the reasons you've mentioned, Alex. I think I think that they are going to use the outcasts now have all the gold in the women's division. So it really solidifies their place. It drives a further wedge with Tony Storm and the rest of them. I think that Ruby Ruby has certainly worked her, her bum off to, to be in this position. I think she is a better character right now than Statlander. I think yeah, she has more momentum. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I think that this will definitely go Ruby's way. So I think all three of us are. And cl- the coin also agrees. I actually found an actual coin to use today. Wow. Um, Ooh. Yeah, I, I think. Not trusting the algorithm. All right, there you go. All right. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I just, I think the coin is, is on the right path with us. Now, um, can I say that? I thought that was one of the best moments of the night. Paige coming out to "We Will Rock You" mm. with her family. It was great. It was great. I thought it was fantastic. As soon as she walked out with her family to "We Will Rock You," I'm like, "Oh, she's winning." Okay, great. Yeah, yeah I knew that. I all got it right. Yeah, super happy because yeah. I Soraya deserves it. She does. Soraya deserves it. I, I want to see her do something with it, though. I mean, if she's the shits, then get it off of her. But I think for all the people in that match, you know, Sheeta, Tony, and unfortunately Britt. Britt's promo had me leaning towards maybe she was going to win. And I was telegraphing, oh, during the show, I'm like, oh, Britt wins. I could see Adam Cole and them being a power couple winning with like an undisputed kingdom. But they didn't go that route. And I, I don't know what I they think do. That, um, the way 
Soraya win didn't weaken Brit at all because Brit was about to tap uh, Sheeta out. So I can see a Brit Soraya match coming up in the near future because Brit sure, took yeah, good care sure. of Soraya um, when they when she came back. So I can see her them going back and forth a bit, and maybe Brit takes it off Soraya down the road if if Soraya just can't yeah. handle we'll the see. workload. It all depends if Brit stays healthy. You know, she's had, yeah. she's had a bunch of injuries and now yeah. she's bad. So. And yeah. do you know what? Like I um, I was watching a this is a tangent. So I was watching a Kurt Angle video, uh, with Chris Van Vliet. Oh, Chris Van Vliet. Yeah. yeah. Um. So the and Kurt Angle had said like he retired at fifty four, and and the question was, is there anything you wish you'd have you would have done more of when you were when you were wrestling? And he said, maintenance. I wish I'd have um, you know, like. Jericho still going. Um, I mean, Sting, Christian, you know, Rey Mysterio. I think he, uh, he used Jericho and Rey Mysterio, but he said those guys do yoga all the time. And he said they're still going, they're still healthy. And I mean, speak so of people that also do preventative maintenance, Darby Allen has said that he is very, very extreme about physiotherapy, uh, stretching, making sure his body is in good condition because. He is going to get thrown around by Luchasaurus right. tomorrow night, tonight. Oh, so let's let's go let's go there. Who do you think? I I think keeps it, or do you think Darby? I think Darby's going to get it. And the reason I think Darby's going to get it is because that will be you can then prolong the feud with Darby and Christian. Sure. Um, I think that's the way it's going to go. Is that you're going to see a Derby Christian feud, and it'll keep going that way. Whereas if Luchasaurus wins, that kind of knocks that nail on the head. Uh, I'm with you. I think Darby takes it. I think Darby is going to ride high off of All In. Um, again, I think they're they're really positioning Darby um, to be continue to be one of the main pillars. And yeah, I think there's more money to be squeezed out of Darby versus Christian with Christian being like, well, now the mentor has to step in and take mm-hmm. this title um, and I, show you how it's done, Luchasaurus. And I, I think there. what you're going to see is um, a Luchasaurus, Christian Cage v. Darby Allen Sting retirement match. I think, I think you're going to see Christian Cage pin Sting, and then you're going to see him talk about how Darby doesn't have a mentor, just like how he's, you know, how his... Uh, Dead, dead father gimmick is going on he's going to bring that into Darby doesn't have a mentor and then it's going to kick that off for a little while which I uh, think and, would be and, fantastic and Adam Copeland will debut to be Darby's new mentor and uh... <laughs> uh, Joe who do you got Joe would like that one I think I'm going to go with I think they're going to give it to Darby believe it or not All right, three for three uh, coin okay. thinks it's Luchasaurus. All right, oh. coin. All right, coin. All right, so that's that's two of nine matches. Where are we going next? So we touched on them already. I don't see Samoa Joe losing the championship to Shane Absolutely Taylor not. because no, I don't I, know who Shane Taylor is, thanks. and Samoa Joe is just gold with the um, with the title. He's, Shane Taylor's fine. I saw him at the the ROH pay per view. He's fine. He's not the standard bearer. He's not ready to beat Joe yet. I think this is just they they've got you, Samoa Joe, and Samoa is such a consummate professional, and you know he'll give a good match. So throw him on the card. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm with you, Samoa Joe, all the way. Joe, where yeah. you at? I'm with Samoa Joe. I mean, no question. You're with, you're with your Samoan cousin. Okay. Yeah, I am. Joe's going to kill him. Yeah, uh, Coin agrees. So there was apparently a Miro versus Powerhouse Hobbs match at All In yeah. that was on That's the pre show uh, that I have no idea who won that. No, it didn't happen, did it? It was I a con- so it was a contract signing, is what I understand. And so I, it may have been either a match or a contract signing. I'm not sure, but I do know that Simon from What Culture Wrestling was part one of the security guards there. Um, <laughs> That's great. So he he did get on the show in front of Wembley in Wembley. So I was happy about that. Um, I think Miro is going to take this. Interesting. I you know what? I'm actually going to go with Powerhouse Hobbs on this one. 
because this is the match I truly don't care about. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to break up our streak and I'm going to I'm going to be contrarian and just say they seem to be building Hobbs to be a bigger deal. Um, and a win over Miro would really do more for him than a win over Hobbs would do for Miro. And I could also see them going back and forth two or three matches on this. So why the hell not? I'm going to go with powerhouse Hobbs on a bigger stage here. That's fair. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Um... Ooh, it's a tough one. I feel like I'm the coin now. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with Miro. I think Miro hasn't had anything of note, and I think he can be rebuilt. Um, I don't think it will hurt Powerhouse Hobbs to drop to Miro, you know, just for, you know, one-off. I'm going to go with Miro. I think it hurts Miro a lot more to lose to Powerhouse Hobbs right now. I'll tell you what, Miro is going to have a great rebuild when he goes back, back to WWE after his <laughs> contract is I think he's going to have a great rebuild. When's um, his contract up? Oh, probably like 20, because these guys sign five-year deals with AEW, yeah, yeah. so probably not the like 20, 30 based on all the injury time <laughs> or whatever. But when he when he's ready, he'll go back and have a grand old time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. He's, he's one of those guys who's probably like, damn, Triple H is in charge. Be Why did I leave? Back over there now. But, yeah, I agree. I agree. Right. But I'm, I'm still going to go with Miro. All right, who's who's next then? Um, there's an eight-man tag match between FTR and the Young Bucks versus Bullet Club Gold. Sure. Uh, in between your trial stints, go on a second pay-per-view in two weeks. That's exactly it. Right. So why not? Um, I honestly don't care who wins. I genuinely don't. I think you still have Bullet- to pick, Alex. You still I know have- I still have to pick. I think that Bullet Club Gold winning would be um would push them further i think than ftr and the young bucks because bullet club gold are an actual team and ftr yeah. and the young bucks like I, th- I can see ftr and the bucks losing but the bucks finally shaking ftr's hand at the end of it mm. good call where are you at joe so it's not for titles so i'm gonna go with bullet club gold uh, I'm going to go with Bullet Club Gold, too. I think that they are really trying to build Jay White and especially as a, a really big, credible threat for a a title run or uh, at least a title challenge. Yeah. And I think they need to keep the heat on Bullet Club Gold. And you have so many good outs to cause the loss between FTR and the Young Bucks. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. Bullet Club Gold. What's the coin say? Uh, Bullet Club Gold. Man, the coin's really on our side today. It's a coin. The coin is coin it, doing it. such a crappy job. It's all uh, all out. We we are screwed here. Um, yeah, we yeah. we're, we're not we're not. I mean, yeah, it, it's 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 not gonna be fun. Uh, <laughs> Adam Cole and MJF versus Dark oh. Order. Yeah, uh, Adam Cole and MJF. Yeah, Dark Dark Order. I think have just been fed to um, better than you, baby. And yeah. I think it's very much going to be a case of. They're ju- it's you're going to get a good match because Dark Order, you, you know, John Silver and Alex Reynolds, uh, they're, they're a good team. They perform well. They can do the comedy well, which is what Better Than You Baby does seem to launch into a lot when you get the double clothesline chant. Yeah. I really hope we see the kangaroo kick again because that was hilarious. Yep, we'll get it again. Um, but yeah, I, I think you're going to see Better Than You Baby defend the, defend the titles for a bit. I, I can see them having a slightly longer tag title run than we're all expecting. Yeah. And then once once they finally break up, that's when you're going to see them lose. I think they'll lose after they've lost, or they'll. I I'm with you. I'm so I oh I. The the there's always a part of my brain, and it's it's a very indecisive brain that goes back and forth and goes. So is this where they break them up? Because you're on pay per view and you're not on pay per view for another three months. Um, so, so do you, if you want to do it on a big stage, is this the stage you do it on? Because this is the only stage you've got left. And would anybody call the dark order getting the win here and the split with MJF and Adam Cole so quickly after winning the titles and the big, like, it's one of those, if, if you were going to have a swerve tonight, this is the match you would do it. Mm Mm-hmm. 
I'm just not thinking it would be a good swerve. So I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with you better than you, Bebe. Retains. But I'm gonna go on record that my par- my spider sense is tingling on this one. Yeah, and I don't blame your spider sense tingling on this at all. I mean, it makes perfect sense because, like you said, this is a really paper thin card. It yeah. really is. Yeah, like, and this is such a lopsided match. This is this is yeah. a rampage match, not even a dynamite match. The the only thing I can see happening is if the kingdom come out and almost cast. Uh, better than you, baby. The titles, and then there's the like they even if they lose the titles to Dark Order, the next program will be the Kingdom versus uh, Adam better Cole and MJF. Did. Yeah. So yeah. Here, here's here's my problem with this card so far. As we're talking about it, this feels very much like an AEW Dynamite card mm-hmm. that we're yeah. getting on pay per view. As a- it, so you can usually like clearly we we we. We have more success predicting the AEW card because a lot of it is either A, what we would do, or just we, this is, you know, you talk about it, this is what makes sense. There's been no real build up for any of this. So I think that for the most part, the winners and losers are almost self explanatory. Like, I don't see a reason you have better than you, Bay Bay, lose to Dark Order. I agree. Right? Other than, may, other than maybe like a shoot reason of like maybe Adam Cole is injured again or maybe MJF is injured again. And they need yeah. to be yeah. on on TV without wrestling, right? So they're yeah. they're doing their segments again. Like that's the only reason I can see Dark Order actually winning. Yeah, because can, if if there's interference by the Kingdom, I think it makes more sense for Adam Cole and MJF to somehow can retain the title and then build that program from there with the titles on the line. Yeah, maybe. I mean, the the only even even Orange Cassidy and John Moxley, it, it's it's a great match. This is the match I'm most excited about of any mm-hmm. on the show. You think it's main uh, event? That that'd be a real feather in Orange's cap, and I could I actually could see it as the main event. I I yeah, think you're onto awesome. something there. I I think it will be because I think it elevates the international title. I think it's yeah. a reward for Orange Cassidy. Too. Yeah. Because, yeah. you, I mean, what else would it be? Can, I mean, maybe Kenny Omega versus Kanusuke Takeshita. No. Um, I don't so, think it would be Luchasaurus versus Darby Allen. No. no. And, and I don't think it's MJF and Adam Cole either. It, I think the it, ROH I think, tag titles. It, you no, know I, I think it could have been if it wasn't against Dark Order. Or even yeah, if there had been like, more of a build with the Dark Order thing. Yeah. I think the, the match you've had the most build with is either the TNT Championship Mm-hmm. Or the international championship. So I think right. one of those two are going to be the main event, and I don't see it being TNT. No, I agree. Here's the sad part: we're looking at this card, and we can't pick a main event because almost none of them feel main event worthy. Right, exactly. that is the problem here. Um, again, it feels like a dynamite. Orange Cassidy yeah. with John Moxley is a dynamite main event. Um, who do you have in this match, Alex? I do. You know what? I really want Orange Cassidy to retain. Same. I think, I think, I mean, it, it's the the easy, the easy out is to say John Moxley because of all the damage that Orange Cassidy has done to himself over the last little while. Yeah. I think, I think Orange Cassidy will find a way to, 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 to win because it makes more sense to elevate Orange Cassidy as the, the embattled face who his, he's barely standing. He, he can endure anything. No, because like he's clearly like um, a Darby Allen in terms of the amount of punishment he can take. Yeah. Uh, like I think his gimmick is he's lazy, but he's a workhorse. He, you know, he he's very laid back, but he can just take a beating. Um, I think Orange Cassidy takes it, and then within the next few months, he just says, "I'm done. Like I'm, I've I've proved my point. I'm I'm done with the title." Yeah, I think it does nothing for John Moxley to take this belt. And John Moxley isn't afraid to put people over, so no, he's I think not. it does absolutely nothing for him to have this title other than oh, he hasn't had it before. Now he's had everything. Well, he hasn't had the TNT title, but, but like right. what I'm saying is, it's just another notch for Orange Cassidy. This is like character building and career making to keep this run going. I mean, there has been multiple times where I thought he was going to lose it. That battle royal, I thought was the perfect time for him to lose it. 
mm-hmm. if he was going to, and he made it through that. So I'm like, you know what? Give it to him, and then somebody who really needs the rub in a couple months, let them be orange for the belt. But right now, no. John Moxley's just going to put on a bloody, violent, hellacious show with Orange, and that will be that. Uh, I agree. I think Orange keeps it. You know, the the run with Orange Cassidy kind of reminds me of uh, Rob Van Dam's TV title reign in ECW, ECW back in the day, where you've got the you've got the undercard belt, but you're really kind of trying to make a point by putting it on a guy who can elevate it and make that yeah. belt feel on the same level as the world title. And I think that that and and Tony Khan being the ECW fart fan that he is, yeah. Um, I almost said Fark saying Mark. Yeah, I know. I was like, is that a fan Mark? No, that's uh, that was a fart Mark. No, but um, okay. yeah, no. So uh, being being the ECW fan that he is, I I think that that's sort of his approach with Orange Cassidy in this title. So I think mm-hmm. Orange will keep it for a while still and just keep elevating this belt to where it's nearly on the same level as the world title. Cause I think it's already bigger than the TNT title at this point. I was I just about to say, it's worth up my mouth. It's definitely bigger than the TNT title. Right. It, it's like their IC title of old yesteryear not yes. current. Well, yeah. Gunther has the IC title. So yeah. We'll, we'll talk about IC. that in a minute. Um, yeah. <laughs> Coin thinks mocks. Mox, all right. Yeah. Wow. Very agreeable coin. Yeah. So we've got Omega versus Takeshita and Eddie Kingston and Katsuyori Shibata versus the Blackpool Combat Club. Man, God, this card is getting depressing. I'm going to be honest. I get her to see this. Jesus. Let's go to the tag match. All right. Um, I think Eddie Kingston and Katsuyori Shibata. Um, I, I don't disagree. I, I agree. It's not, it's not even that I agree. I don't disagree. That's how lackluster I am for this. Yeah, this is just, oof. Uh, Because I think, I think Eddie's making the return and they've got to keep building the ROH title feud. And if Eddie can pin Claudio, then that really Mm -hmm. kicks that into gear for the next couple months again. So I think it's that, Uh, although Shibata, Shibata pinning Claudio would be an interesting wrinkle. In Wait, hold on a moment. Is Claudio still the ROH world title? Yeah, Claudio is still the, the oh ROH God. champ, yes. and yes. Shibata is the pure wrestling champ as well. Gotcha. Yep. Wow. They need to get a TV show for these titles to be relevant. They're just nobody, like wants, nobody wants them, Joe. That's why they don't have one. I know. They're just props now. It's he like wanted, he wanted ROH to be the Saturday show, and it's not. Uh, no, he wanted it to be Rampage. They wouldn't allow him to take over Rampage with ROH. Like they wouldn't allow ROH to take over Rampage. No, nobody wants ROH, dude. Wow, that's the problem. Nobody wants ROH. Damn. And yet you've got one of the best women's wrestling scenes on ROH. So yeah, I mean yeah. it's the same thing with NXT, right? The the yeah. developmental brand always has the better wrestling female wrestling division. It's hilarious. Um, but there you go. Um, yeah. all right. What's the coin say? Uh, Eddie Kingston and Ketsuori Shibata. The coin's really on our side tonight, guys. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it. Um, I can't see... Deca- I think this is going to be the payoff of the Omega Takeshita feud. I think this is... You're going to see uh, Omega beat Takeshita. Now, that said, I also... like. I feel like Kenny has no issue putting people over either. Exactly. So... Kenny's Kenny's got to be careful though because Kenny is getting into the Cody Rhodes, um, you know, gatekeeper position if he's not careful. Um, yeah. And I think I think uh, Takshida is a heel, and a heel can take a loss more than a babyface can. Yeah, I, I mean, agree. So, so I think Omega takes this. I think there's going to be some hinkiness to this, um, yeah. and Omega will win. And I think there will be grounds for a rematch. Um, but that's that's where I go. What about you, Joe? I think Omega has to take this. He's been on such a rip of lose losses lately. So yeah, it just I give it to Omega. I, I really don't care. It better not be the main event. But then again, there's nothing main event worthy so far that we've talked about. So yeah. I say Orange Cassidy and Mox has the main event based I, on what 
That's what I would. I, I would I would put uh, better than you, Bebe, in the opener, uh, and I would have Orange Cassidy close this thing. Yeah. Show uh, how important those ROH titles are by putting them in the opener. Again. <laughs> I I, th- I think that's. I, I, I mean they ha- they didn't have a choice with, uh, all out because yeah. right, right, right like right. you 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 couldn't have them. Oh, we're gonna do, we're gonna do the ROH titles and then the main event. Like just leave the two guys in the ring. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been hilarious, though. Yeah. But uh, all right. Yeah, I'll go with that. All right. All right. Let's go to the exciting pay per view this weekend. Um, <laughs> that all the so, that's as far as we're aware. That's it. Yeah, as far as we're aware <laughs> right now, that's it. Joe, you've been reading the dirt sheets religiously this week, uh, like mm-hmm. you're studying for the Talmud. Um, so, do you know? <laughs> have you read the Collision spoilers? Is there another match going to be added? I thought there was one more match, and I'm trying to think of it. I'm losing it right now. Um, hold on. Let me just think in my head. No, 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 no. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Yeah, no, let's go to the important pay-per-view. <laughs> so that is the fun thing, listeners. We have not won- – it's very, very rare. We have not won pay-per-views this weekend, but we also have a premium live event. So you've got wrestling oh, on yeah. Saturday night and Sunday night. From both major companies, which is yeah. not usual at all, um, and it's it's going to be a really interesting compare contrast weekend in that sense. Definitely, because this is like WWE's like B plus show, so and the way and and it's still way stronger than what we so just went over. If you look at the trajectory of a year worth of WWE shows, right? In general, you you have the high of Royal Rumble, and then usually there's a little bit of a dip because Elimination Chamber is seen as sort of like, do we really need this show? Um, And then you have the big high WrestleMania, and then Backlash, they've built up well, and then it peaks again at SummerSlam. But the back half of the year is usually when they do the worst TV numbers because of Monday Night Football and professional football in general. So they tend to sort of go a little bit on the back burner, and they kind of are positioning the board if you will for next year's wrestlemania starting at rumble so what's fascinating is this year they're on such a great hot streak that payback now actually feels while it's not the na show by any means it still looks Mm -hmm. like a really strong b show for them it really does it really really does and here and this is the lesson that AEW can take from wwe which is you have a bunch of matches here that weren't on SummerSlam, but that have been built over the course of a couple of months, in some cases, five months. So you've had them building towards payback, even though they weren't featured on SummerSlam. So things are still hot for this B show, as opposed to SummerSlam being the end of so many storylines and you've got to now heat something up in three weeks. So it's, it's much interesting booking philosophy here. Um, so, Joe, uh, Alex, where do you want to start with this card? Now, Alex, you're going into this so blind. You, yeah, <laughs> completely blind. You are going uh, completely blind on this one. So there's going to be – hopefully I pick different than the coin. So it, it, but it will find out. You, you um, are a human coin on this one. Basically. I'm going to be the human coin. So human I didn't your, realize – That's your name, by the way. That's your pro wrestling gimmick. You're the that, human coin. I'm the human fine, coin. Absolutely fine with that. Um, the human spider. I, got my name <laughs> wrong. So I didn't realize that Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn were still the uh, undisputed tag team champions. Yes. So let's start with that. Let's let's start with that. So well, what's on, fascinating the, is. The, where do you want to go? Well, why would we? Isn't that possibly the main event? Oh no, I know what the main event is. Never mind. The main yep. events. The main yeah. events. The world heavyweight champion. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, my 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 What's mistake. With you? <laughs> Everything. All right. Um, let's 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 pick. I think I think that's a great way to start the night off hot is to get Kevin and Sammy. You're in a a, a Steel City street fight to start it. Yeah. Um, and the thing about this too, Alex, what's what's fascinating is that unfortunately the tag champs have been caught with the injury bug. Like yeah. Owens, Owens hurt his ribs, so he was off TV for about three, four weeks. Yep. Um, Zayn has some nagging injuries that they played up for a couple weeks as well. Yep. So they're really going into this, but but they've been wrestling Judgment Day since 
after WrestleMania, like the day after WrestleMania. Yeah, this is back and forth. Yeah, stop. Well, and I think that's, you know, this is definitely going to be the blow off. I think they would have had the blow off earlier if there wasn't the injury bug. Yeah. Uh, so where where do you want to go on this one, Joe? Who are you picking? Uh, this is a tough before one. you before yeah. you answer, so you don't influence my thing. I'm thinking oh, um, point. Priest and Balor. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. There is really no reason for this, other than I think from what I get of the Judgment Day situation, it's going to be more, uh, just more tension within the ranks, and I think that's always a good thing from a storytelling perspective. More tension with a win. Yeah, because then all of a sudden you've got um, Damian Priest contending for uh, a singles title whilst also potentially being a tag champion too. And then where does he fit his uh, priorities? Yeah. Joe, where, where are you going, bud, on this one? Because they've I'm been, they've going, been teasing not... this breakup for weeks. Yeah, they have, they have been teasing the breakup. And Rhea said on Raw that if you guys don't bring home the gold, this Sunday, I mean, this Saturday, there's going to be some changes in the Judgment Day. So that's not a throwaway line. And Sammy and Kevin are so popular. And I just don't think it's the right time for them to drop it. Um, the right time would have been like a SummerSlam or something. But since the injury bug, I, I say that the you know the good guys retain. They're, they're keeping it a little bit longer. So, so I'm of two minds on this one. And, but not because I don't care, but because I see multiple interesting booking yeah. scenarios on this. Um, so you can go a few ways on this, right? You can have Judgment Day win the titles, and that keeps them together probably until War Games at Survivor Series. Mm -hmm. My thinking is, is that where you see the big blow off, the big breakup for Judgment Day is War Games. Mm -hmm. And they are they are the big heel faction you need a you need a four person team and i wonder if because they're bringing in jd mcdonough into the fold that mm-hmm. judgment day becomes the the big group to go into war games the way bloodline did last year so i i could you know what i'm going to go against my heart on this one and i'm going to agree with alex i'm oh. going to pick judgment day for the oh. upset win God. To completely upend my expectations of what's going to happen with Judgment Day. And I think J.D. McDonough is going to be the reason they get the win. The human bobblehead? Yep. Oh, no, the it's Funko Pop. The human Funko Pop. Funko Pop. Mm. It, it's so a great wrong, line. but it's so accurate. It's such a great line. It is. Okay. Uh, Coin thinks, uh, Coin agrees with Joe, so. All right. Two, two against two on this one. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Italy. I think so. The next one I, I I found the card and wrote it down. So the next one I have is the Miz versus LA Knight. Oh, I'm looking could be to the me. main event. You talk about a match that could be the main event. This could be the main event. Yeah, this is the main event to me. So this is something that I've actually just in my my YouTube scrolling, I've heard enough of a build up on this that I I still think you're going to see LA Knight taking it. Um, but I think it's going to be like, I will actually probably try and watch it just to see this match. Yeah. I think LA Knight wins, but I think Miz will get the better of him after the bell. And yeah. We have another match. I think there's, yeah. there's money to be made in a real program here. Um, I, I think this is Miz proving once again, that if, when you pair Miz with a guy that's over or getting yep. over, and you really give him this sort of somebody in there that he can really spar with, and he's not sort of elevating the guy right. from a skills perspective. You see how great Miz truly is. Oh, I yeah. think I think everybody thought, oh, this is LA Knight's time to shine. And Miz was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who are you thinking is time to shine? Why are you thinking I'm a stepping stone here? So yeah. I think LA Knight wins to keep his momentum and they're building him up in a title picture. Yep. But I think Miz will come after him after the bell, um, and this feud will continue for at least another month. I think this could, this feud could go till Survivor Series, potentially. That I think so, too, because I think Miz is just so great when he's when he's on. And he have, I, I, I texted you. He eviscerated him on, on, on the um, 
the SmackDown promo, or was it Raw? It was Raw. Whatever the promo was that I watched, um, he killed him when he was like, you were on a reality show too. It was called The Hero, and you couldn't even be the hero of the reality show. You were eliminated first. Like, he just, he had LA Knight flustered big time. He was, if you go back and rewatch that last promo, that he was flubbing here and there. And this like, is graduate school for LA Knight. You know what I mean? Like yeah. LA Knight's LA Knight's in session right now. And he's gotta work. Is. He's gotta learn quick. Um and and Miz is Miz is, you know, taking him to school a little bit here. But not in a bad way. It's not like no. it's not like LA Knight is embarrassing himself. No, 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 no. It's not at all. It's just you you are really seeing that as as over as LA Knight is getting. He still has room to grow as a performer, and this feud mm-hmm. is doing that for him. Yeah, and what really helps me too is I watched uh, After the Bell with uh, mm-hmm. Corey Graves with LA Knight, and it, it gave me a different perspective on him. It was really, really good. It's a great like, episode. Oh, great episode! And yeah. he was just talking about like where he's been. You get a much finer appreciation for like where he's been. But people will be like, "Oh, he was former Impact champion." No one cares. cares. <laughs> no one cares unfortunately even he don't care nope. he, he he mentioned impact only as in he didn't even mention it by name he mentioned it, it was it was nice to get stable wrestling money because he did make decent money in impact sure he was getting decent money from dixie carter because you know that was the days she threw around money everywhere but you know he just knew that, that it wasn't where he wanted to be and then he took a really big pay cut to go to nxt like a big pay cut and you know he just grinded through it and here he is i think he has a great story i think he has an unbelievable great story and i like when Corey graves asked him he's like do you think once you hit the peak and you hit the title that the journey is over that like oh i need to watch and he's like no he's like there's just so much more to do because he's not he's like i'm not going to be happy with just getting the title and i can see him getting a title a title most likely Seth's, but I could see him getting that in the near future by, you know, some point next year. Yeah. I don't see we'll him see. getting the universal, you know, undisputed championship because yeah. Roman's got a stranglehold on that thing. So, but yeah. So where, where's uh, the coin say on this one, Alex? Um, the coin thinks to Miz. Okay. Wow. All right. Bold, bold prediction from the coin. Bold prediction from the coin. All right, next. Uh, Ray Mysterio v. Austin Theory. Oh. I think Ray keeps it. I didn't yeah. even know Ray had it, so yeah, sure. <laughs> um, I say Austin Theory takes it back. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, I think I think Ray's going to keep this. I think there's more uh, LWO drama that they're going to build off this with Santos Escobar. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's a little too soon to take it off Ray. And I think Theory and Grayson Waller versus Cena and Cody Rhodes will end up being um, a match next month uh, yeah. on a PLE. So yeah. you don't need Theory to have the title for that. So I could I and and Cena's in the building tonight as the host of Payback. Yeah, so that's absolutely. Right. See Cena getting in the way of this match since he did take the L at WrestleMania um, yeah. and, and theory losing because of Cena. Um, and then you build that tag match. So I think, I think Ray will keep it uh, just because theory doesn't need the title on where he's going next. All right. So I can, I can concur with that, but I still say theory just because I feel like he's going to get it and be a transitional champion right away. Yeah, I mean, look, if 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 L.A. Knight wins. Yeah, and that's Theory what I'm thinking. And gets it. And then L.A. Knight gets his match with Theory. That's where I'm going. Takes it. And then and then it's L.A. Knight versus Miz for the U.S. title next go around. I could see that, too. Again, I'm not mad at that either. Like, you no. know what I mean? Like, it's it's a really it, it works from a story perspective. It really mm-hmm. does. So we'll see. All right. Next. Uh, Trish Stratus versus Becky Lynch in a steel cage match. Huh. Um, Man, I wish I I Becky better win. Becky yeah, win. I I already put down Becky, 
I have no idea the build up. So I that think was, this that is was a human be, coin side of me. I think these two women are going to put on one of the best women's matches and maybe one of the best matches of the year. I think, think they so? have such a chip on their shoulder. Okay. And they are so pissed at being left off SummerSlam. Yeah. I think, and they are so done with all the bullshit hating online that I think they are going to go out there and they are going to do everything in their power to make this the best match on the card. And you have two performers who could do it. You just uh, got me hype. I like it. I'm just saying, I I think Becky has to win because the story has gone on way too long. And yeah. the base needs to win it. And they are building a Becky versus Rhea feud. So Ooh. You baby face. Oh, they've been teasing it for months. They keep interacting with each other backstage. They keep yeah. looking at each other on the monitors. They keep running into each other on the, uh, the entrance way they've been building yeah. since WrestleMania. So I think that's your survivor series. Uh, Have they ever feuded? Hmm? Have they ever feuded Becky and Rhea? Oh, they've never feuded. They had no, one match. Right. Becky and Shane. They had one sorry, match Becky. in NXT. They had one yep, match yep. in NXT. Becky went down there. Um, yep. That's right. So I think I think Becky wins. Um, Becky give, give the babyface the big blow off win here. But I I'm I'm going on record. I think this is going to be match of the night. So then this should be main event. It could no in like a legit. You could make the argument. Yeah, because I'm I'm not so super hyped about the title match, but no, this um yeah no I I would make this the main event based upon what you're saying. You got the, the stipulation. Is, it's a six month feud that you're blowing yep. off. Finally, you have all the hype from being left off SummerSlam. I mean, yep. the whole point is to give this match a lot of time to tell exactly. the end of this story. Becky had a phenomenal uh, false count anywhere match on Raw. Mm-hmm. Um, with all the momentum going into this, like, yep. and she was the main event of Raw. So yep. I'm, I'm just, you could make the argument that this ends up being the big main event. And I don't think Seth would be mad at that. No. Uh, oh, I'll be right back, guys. I just got to grab my food. I'll be right back. But yeah, I think, Alex, this is, this is, this is the, for my money, this is probably going to be the, the biggest. <laughs> possibly the best match on the card i uh, i think i think that's interesting but I, I also can can see it easily based on what you've just said is that there'll be more to it there um obviously i remember trish stratus from when i was watching wwe um at the I, end of the attitude era she was uh, she was a formative part of my uh yeah. my childhood yes i i would um, say that I'll, my I, adolescence. Well, we to oh no worries what did you get me uh, I got a Portuguese egg Benedict. Ooh, what makes a Portuguese? I guess it has a sauce. Okay. <laughs> sure. Fair enough. Fair enough. I love eggs Benedict, so I'm like, well, I haven't had a Portuguese one. I live in like Portuguese town. Like, you know what? All right, let's try it. I, I'm just saying, when when are you going to Portugal, Joe? That's my question. Oh well, uh, probably not for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any, well, I don't want to offend any uh, Portuguese people, but I don't have any interest to go right now. I, th- I, th- I mean, I don't know if that's offensive as opposed to it's just a statement of fact that you're not interested in going. Um, yeah, go. So that said, who do you have for Trish and Becky? Because I wasn't quite able to pass it out. I think Matthew's so going for Becky. I'm going for Becky, but here's the thing. I really, I, I loved Matthew's open to this yeah i want to see trish redeem herself i think she's been shit on online so bad and, and i don't think it's been warranted i don't think it's no been, i don't think it's been warranted i do think she's had some missteps i do think she's had some really wonky promos and and segments but i don't think it's because of her i think if you had just kept this one-on-one trish becky it would have been blown off a while ago but it also would have been a cleaner feud I think Zoe Starks is just not there. I just, ah, I, I, I don't know what it is about her. She just doesn't, she's not there for me. She's good mechanical. I, but think, just it's, no. I think it's just gone on too long. Yeah. I think this feud was a, this was a three-month feud, not a five-month feud. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
And and to be fair, they were going to blow this off at SummerSlam, it's and then they, they didn't. It's still atrocious that it didn't even make the card. It just. Uh, I I don't know if it's atrocious. I I I you know again what. Was it atrocious that Gunther was not on the card? Was it atrocious that no, he was on the card? Excuse me. Like yeah. there, there are when you have too much good stuff, you can't yeah. fit it all on one card. I get that. Um, what I, what would have been atrocious is if they'd had a five minute cage match on SummerSlam. That would have been atrocious. Yeah. So, so. so I get that. I. But but as a result, it's gone on too long. It, cont- yeah. it it's gone on even longer. Although the lemonades thing is hysterical, this this joke that they've got going on, the, this wink to the to the crowd is fantastic. Um, apparently, the Becky Lynch lemon shirt is like one of the top sellers for the last two months now. Really? Uh, yes, it it has been like people have been, and it's it's hysterical. Um, so, so yeah, but I mean, now let's just also keep in mind, folks, um, there are nine matches on all in. There were 11 matches. I'm sorry, on all out. There were 11 matches on all in. There is uh, one women's match on each card. <laughs> on a card with six matches, there are two women's matches, both of which have very interesting stories going into it for WWE. I know, it's crazy. This How is that the- and and we've got Rhea Ripley versus Raquel Rodriguez um, yep. for the, the Women's World Championship. I don't think it's any secret Ripley's going to win. This is Ripley, though, trying to make Raquel and elevate her um, with a very good, hard-hitting match. If anybody saw their TakeOver match in uh, NXT, yep. it was phenomenal. It was one of the matches that made Rhea a bigger deal. It was the match that propelled Raquel to the NXT Women's Championship. I think these two have such a great personal relationship and such great chemistry in the ring. We are going to get a barn burner here. Um, But Rhea will take it for me. Where do you fall on this, Joe? Uh, Rhea's going to take it, but I think this is going to be the equivalent of Drew and Gunther. Amen. Amen. Uh, Alex, I'm sorry, we biased you on this one. That no, I already had. So I've actually already got my picks for the next two matches down, just in case Perfect. that happened. I already had Rhea. Uh, coin says Raquel. Stupid. Oh, wow. coin. That coin's dumb. Well, that I mean, coin it's a random, dumb. random chance. Um, so before you get into the the main a potential main event, I have Nakamura. Ooh, wow. interesting. Okay. Old. Now you're now again you you're coming into this totally blind, right? You don't know anything about this this feud that they've built. Nothing about team. the only thing I know about it is that Seth Rollins is uh, injured, or is you know getting to the point where he might want to drop soon, and I, and I think that if you let him keep the title to Mania, I think that would be a mistake because then you're running the risk of having too long term. Oh no, he's not keeping this till Mania. I agree right. with you. I don't think he's keeping it till Mania. I think you're going to see a title change sooner than later. And if they're building up for potentially LA Knight to go after this one, mm. uh, it makes more sense to have it as someone who's a heel because Rollins is remarkably popular. I think the title has done wonders for him in terms of bringing him back out to the forefront. And again, saying to someone who didn't really know what what was going on in WWE, I keep hearing his name a lot. So I I think give him time, you know, have him drop the title, give him time to recuperate, bring him back for the Rumble. Okay. Joe, where are you? No way in hell Seth loses it to Nakamura. That's where I'm at. I like Nakamura. I really do. But I think um, Seth retains here. Yeah, he's going to not keep it forever, but it's not the time yet. He needs a bigger blow-off for losing this, I think. So, I I agree Seth will win this match. Yeah. I think we are seeing a great reinvention of Shinsuke Nakamura. Mm-hmm. I've, I've loved his promos since they're allowing him now to speak in Japanese. His promos yep. are much more interesting he is he is clearly way more comfortable at the with the inflections. Um, I think I actually understand him better now that he's cutting his promos in Japanese. Right. Um, 
but I I don't see Seth losing because this is a three week feud, and I think he will lose it to Damian Priest. I think Damian That's Priest think. will will cash in on Seth, mm-hmm. um, and I think that would happen at maybe the night after Survivor Series after the Judgment Day implodes, um, or you could what make the argument. Do you, do you think it could be tonight? Yeah, I just you just convinced me. Yeah, Seth retains, goes through a hell of a shit show in a fight with uh, Nakamura, but Damian gets him afterwards. So here's here's my thought: if if Judgment Day loses, yes, the tag that's only if Judgment Day loses. Damian wins the the yeah. world title tonight. Correct. If Judgment Day wins the tag titles, yeah, no. I think Seth will. I don't think they pull the trigger on Damien yet. No, same. Agreed. Now, the only other scenario I could see for this title is Gunther losing the Intercontinental title and then immediately winning the World Heavyweight Championship to prove that he still got it. Um, well, it's I, the same I, night. No, not in the same night. I that think it would be another show. I, I think but, if anyone could do that, though, Gunther could do that believably. Yeah, me too. Gunther could do it believably because I think Gunther is the next is, is going to be the next long term world heavyweight champion. I agree. Uh, so I, I but again, like none of these stories are bad. If Seth wins and Damian cashes in, that's not a bad story. Mm-hmm. If if Gunther takes it, that's not a bad story. I agree yeah. with you, Alex. Though I think Seth is going to take some time off before Rumble. Because I, so, yeah. I think I think Seth is going to be in the main event of WrestleMania 40 with Cody Rhodes and Roman I Reigns. Agree. So yeah. you've got to let him heal up a little bit more. But the thing is, this injury he's had for four years. So, I mean, it's they're making a story about it now. But, uh, but, but we'll see. I thought it was kayfabe injury. It's a real injury. Yeah, he's basically he's got two stress fractures in his back that he he's managed for about four years now. Um, so, but again, he's a guy that takes very very good care of himself and he's and Russell how incredible to for manage stress it. Fractures. Yeah, yeah. But, but stress fractures are one of those things that unless you take time off, they never heal. Right. So yeah, I so I I just don't see Seth losing to Nakamura. No. Uh, but I don't see Seth keeping it for much longer. Right. I agree with that. Yeah. So, yeah, that will be the official thing is if, if Judgment Day lose the tag match, then I the speculation of Damian cashing in tonight. Yep. And it also would be a nice little, you know, nail in the coffin to AEW All Out. You know <laughs> what I mean? I, I, I could see them doing that. I could definitely see from that point being like, all right, let's give them something to talk about instead of, you know, this rinky dink show that's going on. And then ah, listen, I don't think WWE minds that AEW is getting all this bad press to talk about them. So I don't no, know sure. if they want to care about that. Uh, let's be very clear, gentlemen. The the most important thing that has happened to WWE this month is their license deal with the NFL. That is the most important, oh, most God, incredible insane. thing to happen. My gosh, it is it is the it is the biggest, most impactful thing to happen to the wrestling business in the last but month. Did you notice every oh, single thing? team has a title except Jacksonville? Well, they sold out. You see, um, <laughs> <laughs> they sold out before they were even allowed to be pre-ordered. You see. Oh, that is hilarious. Tony Khan's like, nope. <laughs> But you see what? I would not be shocked if that was a Tony Khan decision or or his father's decision and not WWE. I don't think that was WWE because they made the belt. Yeah, uh, no, 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 I'm saying it was Tony Khan saying no. I would be I would not be shocked at all because no offense to Tony, but Tony feels like a petty bitch. I was about uh, to say he's a petty bitch. Yeah, <laughs> that man holds a grudge. Uh, <laughs> so. Um, but that, for my money, that is the most consequential thing to happen to the wrestling business this past month is WWE finally, after so many years of giving away custom world title belts mm-hmm. to NFL teams and NBA teams and MLS teams and pro golfers, it feels like yep. whoever, 
they finally paid off and have an official licensing deal with the NFL, who is hotter than ever. Um, and and this, those are selling really well right they're now. They're selling great. Um, and it's it is going to it is change it is going to change the way professional wrestling can get mainstream sponsorship and partnerships with professional sports. Yeah, which which is always looked at WWE and wrestling as less than lowbrow. Um, yep. Um, Want to be athletes, right? And this is this is an era of legitimacy pro wrestling has never had. And it's incredible to see this happen for the business. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's cool. I, I, am I the biggest fan of the Patriots belt? Eh, it's okay. But <laughs> I haven't um, even looked at the Eagles belt. I really should look at the Eagles belt. Yeah, go look at the Eagles belt. Um, I'm just curious on what the Jacksonville one looked like. <laughs> no, you can find pictures. They made the belt. Okay, I'm going to have to find pictures of it. But yeah, so are we going to not get the main event? Mike spot tonight where it's John Cena and Grayson Waller and Cody Rhodes. Oh yeah, we didn't talk about that. Um yeah. I, uh look, I think I think Cody Rhodes is is looking at Grayson Waller and saying, hmm, fun upstart. He's getting a lot of buzz. Yeah. Um, I think I think we're gonna have Cena and Rhodes. I think Cena will come out. I think it's Cena and Rhodes versus Waller and Grayson. And then I think you spin that off. And I think you are going to have Cena versus Cody Rhodes. That is the biggest possible match. Cody will get the win. It will continue his story to get back to Roman at WrestleMania 40. So uh, where would you have Cody versus Cena? Well, you got to build to that, though, dude. You got to build to that. You can't just go straight to it. What, two months? They have him for two months straight? They got him for about two and a half months. Okay. So. You you have the tag. Look, what did they do with Roxena? They had them tag together against, yeah. against the Awesome Truth. I was that there was for that show. That um, was so but but you know you have them tag together. They can't quite get along, but they sort of get along. And then you know it's the passing of the torch. The biggest baby face of the last twenty years will do the job for Cody yeah. Rhodes to to be the the next standard bearer in the same way that Brock Lesnar put over Cody Cena will put over Cody and now now you have Cody as like oh he can beat Roman at like now this is it if he beats Brock Lesnar and, and John Cena he can beat Roman like yeah. he, he becomes that much more legitimate and then he wins the rumble starting from number one and becomes the first guy in 30 years to win the rumbles back to back um so like this yeah. is this is our trajectory, folks. This is this is how we're getting to mania with Cody Rhodes. It's a good point. That's a great point. Yeah, because the Brock Lesnar feud did wonders for him as far as like iron sharpens yeah. iron. Absolutely. And now you and now Cena can come in and give him another big endorsement and push yeah. to to ascend at WrestleMania 40 to be the guy for WWE. Do you think it's just a friendly feud, though? Like, I, how do you get there with Cena? He won't. I don't know, but I can't wait to find out. Yeah, it, it should be very interesting. But um, yeah, because Cena was on SmackDown last night, and then he said he's back for the next eight weeks or eight or you know, nine weeks, like straight on appearances, so where, which I think is great. Take a look at the calendar. Where does that get you if he's there for eight weeks? Does that get you to Survivor Series? I don't think it gets us to Survivor Series. I think it gets us to Hell in the Cell. Oh, it gets us to Fast Survivor. Lane. Okay, Fast Lane. All right. It gets you to Fast Lane. So I think, uh, yeah. So I think if it now, of course, Cena could decide to also be at Survivor Series. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. This. I'm thinking you would put this on Survivor Series. It would be one of the big four. Well, here's the thing. If it depends on where they go, so I'm so sorry, Alex. We've gone so far. Like we've wrapped up the card. It's going to be a great card. <laughs> no, no uh, worries. Keep going. I think that you the arguments being made though that at Survivor Series it's a War Games match with Judgment Day versus Sammy KO Cody, maybe Seth. Right? Yeah. So yeah. I think Cody's booked for Survivor Series. So mm -hmm. you could you could put Cena on Fastlane within his allotted time. Mm -hmm. that he had before. 
Um, and and then Cody goes to fast lane and then I'm sorry, from Survivor Series, you're just building to the Rumble. And what a Rumble. I think this is going to be the the best Rumble, Royal Rumble in the history of Royal Rumbles coming up based on how many guys you've got so hot and so believable uh, yeah. to win it. I, I really think this we are building towards an incredible rest of the year and an incredible WrestleMania 40. But yeah, I think I think it's Cena, Cody at Fastlane. Cody's in the War Games match. It's his father's match. He's never been in it. Uh, oh, good call. He's he's gotta he's gotta you know he's gotta go in there and have and he's gotta be first. He's gotta go out there and be first the way his dad and Arn Anderson started the first one. Yep. Um, so I feel like Cody's gonna be in the War Games match at Survivor Series. So I think it would be him and Cena in October. But that's just me. I think that's a great, great prediction, and I do want to see it now. Because my thinking was they're going to put Cena versus Grayson Waller. That's what I thought. I think but, that's going to be a TV feud. I but think, there's way more money in Cena Cody. I mean, Cena God. Cody. You, you, you don't know if you have this chance again with Cena. And right. That this is the – what is the absolute biggest match you could possibly have? And how mm-hmm. could it do the most for the biggest guy – you're trying to build up in the company and it would be yep. Cena Cody. Yeah, no, perfect explanation. So Alex, uh, what else we got? I think that's it for um, that's the card. That's the card. It's both cards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it, in less than 90 minutes, we covered the fallout of all, all in. We covered yep. all out. We covered payback. We booked survivor series and fast lane. <laughs> Yeah, damn efficient this week, gentlemen. It's surpri- surprisingly That's so. Right. Rousing intro. It got everything going off starting right. <laughs> Thank you for that. I, I've been thinking about that for, for a couple of days since you invited me back on. I was like, it was oh, so great. I wonder if they'll let me do it. Do you, do you, know, what the, do you know what the worst part about that was? We, we said, we said, oh, we, we need to make sure we invite Matthew back on. And then both of us forgot to actually invite you until I just met <laughs> <laughs> message you out of the blue and I was like I hope he's free because it'd be really awkward if he wasn't just I, I'm like your Dolph Ziggler just put me in at any slot last second I can go out there and get the job done for you so, 100% agree Dolph Ziggler do something god or like Alyssa Wong to bring it back to comics like you can you can call up Alyssa Wong and she will write you a Deadpool story a Jeff story a Captain yep. Marvel story like last minute call Alyssa she gets the job done so so think exactly. of me if you're Alyssa Wong clutch there you go. There we go. But I don't have any more thoughts. You, what about you, gentlemen? I don't have any final thoughts. Uh, my final thought is it's always a great weekend when you get to, to see some great wrestling. And I hope yep. our listeners are going to enjoy some great wrestling this weekend. And yes. I hope that they will give us uh, their predictions and eviscerate us for ours. I like it. Yeah. I, uh, folks, you know where to find everyone. Uh, if you don't, it's in the show notes. You can find out at graphicpolicy.com. If it's not on Spotify, I never remember what I do and don't, what is and isn't in for Spotify. So thank you for listening. That's right. Um, that's a wrap, I guess. It's a wrap. Take care. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games. 
you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.